Hello friends. So I'll be talking a very briefly on this fluid controversies. I was meant to give a talk in uh, Vaidehi uh, this week in Bangalore. So as a run up to preparing for this, I thought it's good that I give a very quick and very brief overview on all the trials that have happened in two major dimensions because these are the questions that can be asked in all your DRND exams. Um, so mainly the trials which are comparing whether colloids versus crystalloids and a brief sort of a overview on the trials encompassing uh, the comparison between the balanced solution and the saline because that is where a lot of activity has happened in last one decade. So it's just uh, good to have a brief overview so that it would be easy for uh, trainees to answer this question if it comes in exam. So I'll just take you through a very brief sort of a overview. So when we look at the evidence, so first we look into the evidence of trials that have evolved comparing uh, crystalloids and colloids. So if you look at the major landmark trials uh, favoring crystalloids, you have these trials, YCEP, Success, and Check, which came in 2008 and 1. So there were two trials which came favoring colloids, Christmas trial that came in 2012 and crystal that came in 2013. And favoring balanced crystalloids were smart and uh, Yunus et al. from Malaysia. I think he was the first one who did an observational study pointing out to the benefit of uh, balanced solution. And then we have uh, these landmark trials which came a little later, favoring the use of balanced solutions, split salt and salt TD. So these were some of the major trials, but I'll just take you through sequentially, year-wise, how the trials have evolved. So we'll first cover about all the major trials uh, that have compared crystalloids and colloids. So this was the first sort of a trial that came in 2001. So we are in 2024, almost two decades back. So this was a French trial uh, that came in 2001 by Scott Jen et al. comparing gelatin versus hydroxyethyl starch. And they found that hydroxyethyl starch was associated with a higher risk for acute kidney injury. So this was the first study way back, 20 years back, where they looked at deleterious effect of hydroxyethyl. But here, if you see, they have compared colloid with another colloid. So gelatin also was a colloid. Then after 10 years, 2012, so it was the Scandinavian group, uh, Perner et al. And, and his colleagues, that came out with a study. This was the first sort of a study, 2012, from the Scandinavian group, comparing six percent hydroxyethyl starch and saline. So this so after 10 years after the French reported the risk of AKI, so they compared hydroxyethyl starch with saline and they found that the group with hydroxyethyl starch had higher risk of death within 90 days and the group with hydroxyethyl starch uh, needed more RRT. So they were at a higher risk of needing renal replacement therapy. So 2012 around one decade back, so this particular trial came. After that, the Australian group by Myberg et al., so they again did the study at around same time, 2012, comparing hydroxyethyl starch with ringer acetate. So you could consider this as a balanced solution. And they found there was no benefit. So which means to say hydroxyethyl starch did not confer any benefit. Rather, in hydroxyethyl starch group, the patients needed more renal replacement therapy. So they developed AKI needing RRT. So at around 10 years back, you can see there were two major trials, one from the Scandinavian group and one from the Australian group, which pointed out to the deleterious effects of hydroxyethyl starch in that, that they developed higher risk of AKI needing RRT. And then uh, Anayan et al., one year later, 2013, uh, came out with a crystal trial that was published in JAMA and this was a French group which did this study one year later, where they again compared colloids versus crystalloids in all types of cells. If you see this earlier study, they took mainly sepsis and septic shock. And then at all took hypovolemic and septic shock, compared colloid versus crystalloids. And they found that the use of colloids did not confer any benefit. So they looked at 28-day mortality and there was no benefit. So these were, uh, if you see, all these trials came at around 10 years back. And they found the two trials, the Australian trial and the Scandinavian trial, showed that increased risk of AKI was there in hydroxyethyl and increased risk of RRT was there. Uh, the, uh, the French group did the study, basically showed there was no mortality benefit 
with the use of coli. So basically, it looked like a non-inferiority that we should stop using coli. So then after this colloid, crystalloid study, then obviously albumin also is a colloid. So there were few studies which looked at benefit of albumin. And then there were few studies later on which came which really did not show any major benefit with albumin. So the first study that came was in 2004 by the Australian group. Uh, so this was by uh, Finfer et al. They compared 4% albumin with 0.9% saline to see if there is any additional benefit with albumin. And they found there was no additional benefit with albumin. 28-day outcomes were similar between albumin group and the saline group. But what they found in this study was the patients who got albumin, when they did a subgroup analysis, they found non-significant benefit of albumin in sepsis subgroup of patients. But it was contrary in traumatic brain injury, albumin patients, there was more harm. So... And there was benefit of saline in traumatic brain injury. So albumin caused more harm in traumatic brain injury, but it had some protective effect in sepsis, in subgroup analysis, but it was non-significant sort of a benefit. So this was the findings in SAFE study, which again pointed out that the use of albumin as a colloid did not show any great additional benefit. So the Dubois et al., uh, this is from Belgian group in 2006, 2000, uh, which was two years later, they showed that albumin has an ability to improve organ function and reduce the positive fluid balance. So this was a sort of an observational study that they did. Then after this came this landmark trial called Albios trial. So this came from the Italian group, Chironi et al. It was published in NEJM in 2014. So about exactly 10 years back. Again, comparing albumin uh, so versus crystalloids. Here, the albumin that tried to maintain more than 3 grams per deciliter in critically ill patients. And even in this study, there was no benefit with regards to 28-day mortality. Albumin did not confer any benefit. But the albumin group did have better hemodynamics. So hemodynamic stability appeared to be seemingly better with albumin. So this was about the Albios trial. So basically, if you see all these colloid trials, if you see mainly the STAR studies, uh, pretty much the signals were towards it causes acute kidney injury and increased risk of uh, RRT. And when you look at the albumin study, it did not show major superiority benefit, but there were some sort of a signals towards attaining better hemodynamics in certain subgroups of patients in sepsis. And that's what was shown in the SAFE study as well and in the Albios trial. In a subgroup, in a select group, it attained tried so attain better hemodynamics, although there was no mortality benefit. And as we speak, 2024, there is this ARIS trial, which is an ongoing trial by the German group, where they are recruiting as we speak. So the, they are looking at critically ill patients to maintain albumin more than 3 grams per deciliter for 28 days and to look at the outcome. So the results are awaited. So it's an ongoing trial. So this is the sort of a landmark trials that have evolved over the last two decades on the role of colloids and crystalloids. So now pretty much it is very clear that colloids have no role in critically ill patients based on all these trials. And in fact, uh, there is a, in the recommendations, there is a suggestion that colloids causes more harm and should not be used in ICU because the risk of AKI and the need for RRT is higher in colloid. And that is where we are at at this point of time. So... So in this ARIS trial, they're looking at whether albumin maintaining more than 3 grams has any impact on survival. So that, now we'll move to the trials because in the last one decade, if you see, most trials are comparing whether should we use saline in ICU or should we use balanced solution because the hypothesis is, if you look at saline, they have 154 uh, millimoles per liter of chloride. So, so the whole hypothesis is this chloride is more harmful to the kidney and it causes hyperchloremic acidosis and using balanced solution for perhaps may be better because they have less chloride and they have more protective effect for the kidney. So based on this hypothesis, multiple trials were done comparing normal saline with balanced solution. So the first sort of a trial that highlighted this was by Yunus et al. This is from again a Malaysian guy. So in 2012, they showed that chloride restrictive strategy reduced the risk of AKI and reduce the risk of RRT. So this was the first sort of a observational study where they showed that chloride restrictive strategy had a protective effect on 
kidneys reduced aki and reduced rrt after this there was this split trial that came by mp at all it was published in jama so this was from the spanish group so published in 2015 where they compared buffered crystalloids versus saline and they found that buffered or the banner solution buffered crystalloids did not reduce the risk of aki did not reduce the risk of rrt or did not reduce the risk of mortality basically this was the earlier trial 2015 almost around 10 years back where they showed comparing saline with crystalloid the the balanced solution balanced solution did not have any great additional benefit at that point of time and then 2017 the salt trial came by semler et al it was published in american journal of respiratory critical care by us authors this was a randomized crossover study where they compared saline versus balanced solution even in this salt trial they showed that the balance use of balanced crystalloid did not make any difference in the make is major adverse kidney events at the end of 30 days so at the end of 30 days major adverse kidney events there was no difference either use saline so even earlier trials did sort of show signal that compare saline versus balanced solution both appear same and balanced solution did not confer any huge additional benefit but then surprisingly the same group similar at all they did the study in 2018 called the smart trial so and they showed very contrarian view in this smart trial so all trial done by the same author said balanced crystalloid did not have any benefit but one year later the same group did a smart trial they compared saline with balanced crystalloids and they showed that major adverse kidney events at the end of 30 days were lower With the use of balanced solution this was a contrarian view from the same authors in a study done one year apart and very similarly conducted randomized uh, cluster randomized crossover study they showed sort of a lower risk of kidney events with the use of balanced solution so this opened up the sort of whole dimension that whether should we start using balanced solution and there was a Surge of intensive trying to adopt using balanced solutions. Then the other trials that came. Then this basic trial came. This was by the Brazilian group in 2021. This also compared saline versus balanced crystalloids, and here they showed there was no difference. So use of balanced solution did not show any benefit in improving 90-day mortality, or there was no difference in acute kidney injury or the need for renal replacement. So it was only the smart trial. We saw sort of uh, rekindled the enthusiasm of using balanced solutions, saying chloride causes more acute kidney injury, and maybe we should perhaps uh, use more of balanced solution. But all the subsequent trials, even the studies previously also had not shown any major benefit. Basic trial did not show, and in in basic trial, in fact, they showed the use of balanced crystalloids in traumatic brain injury caused more harm. There's a potential harm if you use balanced solution in traumatic, and there was a move towards benefit with saline in traumatic brain injury which was shown earlier in the safe study the safe study showed use of uh, albumin showed more harm in traumatic brain injury and had a protective effect with saline so then after this came the most recent trial called the plus trial this is again by the australian group infer et al here they compared saline with the plasma light 148 so again in this they did not show any reduction in 90 day mortality or no reduction in aki or rrt in patients uh, so when compared with saline so basically if you see how the studies have evolved in last 10 years even if you see all the earlier studies basically they showed no major benefit with buffered crystalloid even if you look at the split trial they showed no benefit it was only the earlier observation study by unes et al which showed chloride restrictive strategy having benefit so only this study and the smart trial showed some benefit but the salt trial split trial basic trial and the plus trial all these trials did not show any major benefit with using balanced solution compared with saline so today where we are we we pretty much have concluded that we could safely use saline but of, of, of course we have to keep a close eye on the chloride and if chloride is high maybe we may have to adopt some balanced solution to reduce the surge or rise in the chloride otherwise saline is reasonably safe even today at this point of time especially in tbi one should avoid balanced solution is what we can 
sort of decipher and agree upon. So that's all, folks. So this is more about all the trials. So if uh, question, these questions are asked in DRNB. So very simplistically putting the timelines and writing the trial names and writing the main highlights of this should pretty much uh, get you to garner full marks for such questions. So, so thank you very much. So request all our listeners to attend our signature conference six, which is happening from 18 to 20th October. So request our listeners to submit valuable work to our journal of acute care. So thank you, thank you, and all.